Well, I know what you're thinking. What's this thing doing back here? This was not supposed to be a series. This guitar was a one and done, very first video I ever did. But, you know what happened? Um, I've heard since doing this guitar that these things have a reputation for bowed necks. And I corrected the bow in this neck in the first video. But it's back. Um, and not only is it back, but if you remember, I'm out of adjustment on my truss rod. So right now, my action is about a hundred thousandths, which is pathetic at the 12th string for either an acoustic or electric. And um, it's got too much neck relief. I don't even want to measure it because it'll just make me cry. Anyway, um, so what do you do when you've got this bad of a problem? Well, you could try to straighten this neck. And to be quite honest, I've never done that before. And while I understand how it works, I really don't have the tools. I could try to rig it up and apply some back pressure to the neck around the seventh fret-ish and try to, you know, push down on the, the other ends of the neck and apply some heat. Maybe even try to steam it a little bit with a an iron. I don't know. Uh, I've seen a lot of different methods, but I just don't. I just don't have the experience. So um, anyway, uh, what are my options? So my options were I could part this thing out, which means throw the body on eBay, throw the neck on eBay tell somebody about the problems of both of them and just hope to get my money back but um, I actually think I want to try to fix this a different way I have a neck that I got recently and it's kind of a hockey stick style neck and I was thinking, well, what am I going to do with this thing? I'm going to try to do a project for you guys and, um, you know, build a Strat style guitar or something with a hockey stick neck and, you know, just, uh, I don't know, see, see what I can do. Um, but um, opportunities present themselves in different ways sometimes. One thing I noticed about this neck is the heel. The heel is a Telecaster shaped heel. It's very square. Strats have a little bit of a radius here. Um, so I was going to have to put this on a Telecaster body anyway, unless I just wanted to reshape the heel, which I was thinking about doing also. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, hey, um, this is very serendipitous, but I happen to have a neck that might fit this guitar. So um, throwing caution to the wind and I'm going to do it. I'm going to put this neck on this tele, tele acoustic and uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, it has some advantages over the original neck. Um, number one, it's, it's really a thick profile, which I actually was kind of surprised about. I think it's just as thick as the original Teleacoustic neck, which obviously this thing is a piece of junk and warped, but um, maybe this thing being new will hold up to the stress. Uh, another thing is it's got a break back to the headstock that the original uh, Fender headstock does not have. Um, it's This one's got uh, string trees and it's very flat in parallel to the fretboard. This one breaks so I actually don't need 
to use the string tree. Um, I've got some work that I've got to do to this thing, so don't discount any of that. None of the frets are particularly well finished. They're all very sharp on the ends. The nut looks like it's just glued in there and not cut exactly properly. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to do final cut on the nut. It has no truss rod cover. Um, it's got a few rough edges. A couple different spots where it needs final sanding. And it basically has no finish on it. I mean, it's got some kind of a light satin clear gloss finish to it. Um, but it's not final finished, in my opinion. So here's what we're going to do to this thing. I'm going to be sanding this thing down. I'm going to give it a nice tongue oil finish front and back. I might decide to put some sort of a headstock decal on here. This is a Fender guitar, so I might be able to get away with putting a Fender decal up there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and uh, dress the frets, file the nut, install tuners, oil the fretboard. Uh, I don't think I'm missing anything. That's the basics. Um, may have to do a little bit of sanding in the neck pocket. We'll see. But that's the basics and uh, never thought I'd be back here but this is part two of the Telecaster story. We'll see how many parts it takes to get this done. By the way, I haven't been saying this in recent videos but Please like and subscribe my channel. Um, I can only continue doing this if I get some feedback and response from it. So if you see this, you like it, please leave a comment. Please like it. Please subscribe. I need all the help I can get. Um, I've got a few more projects coming down the pike. I've got a Charvel TX that's coming up pretty soon, or TE. Uh, it's a Telecaster copy. Um, I've got a Korean Epiphone Strat copy that I just picked up that I'll be doing. I still plan to do a DIY guitar at some point. Those are really hot right now, um, so might as well give, it that, give one of those a shot. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to be uh, trying to do some quick tip videos here pretty soon. Like, you know, uh, how to change your intonation or how to check your neck relief or um, how to change strings or you know something. I'll, I'll, I'll put together a quick tip series where I've got videos that are no more than five minutes in length and you know these long form videos are great for people that have the time to sit down and watch them but they're not for everybody so if you're watching this please like and subscribe I really appreciate the help and uh, anyway on to this pig So, there's a couple different ways that I could approach this, but I'm going to try to save these strings. They're brand new. Um, I, may, I, I wound them a little extra long because I thought I might take this guitar apart one more time. And I actually did take it apart again after I got them restrung. But, um, anyway, I, I think even though this headstock shape is a lot different than the original, I think the the tuners are not that much farther away from the nut that I think I can pull it off. So we'll see. I may have to buy a new set of strings. But if that's the end of this, then no big deal. But what I'm going to do is detune quite a bit, capo this, and try to take these bridge pins out to release the strings. And we'll see how that works. If that doesn't work, I'll release them up here, and then just roll them up and wait for them, wait for us to reuse them. But uh, we'll go with the first route for now.
hey, that's gonna work. Good deal. Next, I've got to get this back or this body separated from this neck, so I got to take this this back screw set off here. My shim. Gotta save that. Had another shim in there too, another piece of a guitar pick that I was using. I don't know if the new neck will need a shim yet. So uh, let's see if this is gonna fit. Definitely off by a little. This neck at its widest point is 2.243, so almost two and a quarter. This neck at its widest point is 2.204, maybe 2.206. So that's a little bit wider than 3 sixteenths, I believe without having a calculator in front of me. And this body measures two point two nine or something. 09 rather so I've got to lose at least 15 thousandths is that right 2.24 oh no it's not 15 thousandths it's 40 30 30 something thousandths 30 plus probably 35 35 thousandths is not a whole lot that's 35 thousandths so I don't have a lot to go but I do have some to go um, you know, I mentioned that this neck is going to require some sanding to get, get things done. And, and really, like, you can see, I don't know if it shows up in the camera, but there's some finished work on the fretboard that's not too great. There's definitely a crack that's been repaired in this wood before it was installed. Um, and the final sanding around the joints, like where the neck joins the nut and then this volute here and the end of the headstock those areas are not well sanded so I guess what I'll just do is attack the whole thing with some sandpaper first 
get it sort of final sanded all over and then take another measurement at the heel and see where we are. So this neck has to be a little thinner in the heel area um, in this dimension. So I need to take a little bit off the sides. It's not a lot. I just had to take off about 15 to 20 thousandths on each side. I've already done some sanding. I'm down to the point where I just need to take off about 10 thousandths more on each side. I just thought I'd show the process really quickly. I just have a little sanding block, some fairly aggressive sandpaper for these first few stages, and I'm just blocking the side back and forth. I don't think everybody wants to watch that, but you know, when you're doing this, take a little off each side, check your caliper, your measurement. Um, you can tell exactly how much you took off one side whenever you do that, and you try to take the same amount off the other side. Um, you know, keep this thing nice and square. Um, you know, use a flat block and just do a little at a time. It's tedious, but um, it's, it's gonna come out fine. And I can tell there's not much finish on this neck at all. So, um, you know, once I've gotten this all smooth, I'll be able to put an oil finish on this thing and uh, it'll play nice, so. I'm not even to the point, I'm not even taking this down to the point where I'm getting any fret sharp edges yet. And I'm also trying to stay away from the fretboard just a little bit because you don't really have to take anything off the fretboard itself. You just try to get to this heel here. Um, same thing on this side. I, don't, I haven't hit any sharp edges yet, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Just got to keep going. I won't make you guys watch that, um, but just wanted to explain it. Also. Um, I will sand the bottom of this just a little bit. Again, I'll use a block. And I just want to take off just a few thousandths because that's all that the difference was between this and the original neck that fit in this teleacoustic. So um, that's the basics. I'll keep sanding. Okay, so I've been at this a while. I've been block sanding the sides. I've done a little radiusing around the edges here just to fit it up a little better, make it a little smooth. Um, don't have any sharp fret edges, so I'm happy about that. And uh, I've done a little test fit. And she fits. So I'm close. Um, I've got to do a few more things. You can hear just a little creakiness there where it's rubbing something. I just got to find it. Um, but I'm, I'm really close and, um, uh, I think this neck's going to work out. So I'm getting excited. Okay. So I got this heel sanded down. Um, just to give you an idea of the grits I was using, I started out with a 80. Um, I went to a, a 120 and then, uh, I didn't have anything in between. So I went to a 280 and with the 280, it's sanded fine enough that It'll take the finish, um, and I won't have to worry about feeling any sand marks or seeing any sand marks, and it looks good. So, rounded off all the edges, um, went ahead and rounded off all the bottom corners here, just so they don't catch in the neck pocket. Um, I haven't decided. I may actually round the edges of this fretboard just to kind of match the whole rounded theme of the guitar, because the bridge is all rounded, and of course the body shape's all rounded, so... Maybe I'll cut these hard edges off and just kind of round them over a little bit. Um, the rest of this neck, I'm going to sand with a uh, just a scotch Bright pad, get it all scuffed up, um, make sure there's no rough edges and high marks, anything like that. Um, and um, I may have to address these frets. So I'll probably be knocking them down with a file individually. Anyway, I'll start on the Scotch Bright work and uh, go from there.
Okay, it's dirty, but it's sanded. Um, I look filthy. Um, the guitar neck is equal. I'm going to clean up a little bit and get everything sort of uh, clean, vacuumed and everything, and then I'll, I'll be back to uh, talk a little bit about uh, fret sanding, probably, maybe finish work. Okay, just a real quick update on where things stand. I've got this all sanded down. Um, I used uh, 280 to do a final sand over the whole thing. Got all the little ridges out, got all the little spots, um, high, you know, high grains and whatnot. Um, I went ahead and used a diamond file along the edges of the fretboard to try to make sure that none of the fret tangs were sticking out, none of the frets were extending past the end of the fretboard. And then I used a small triangle file to round off the uh, edges of each fret. Um, I'm not done working on frets with this. I just want to get them to the point where I don't have to do any major work on them and then later I'll come back and do a polish and an oil on the fretboard once uh, things are you know more finished on the neck. Um, I think I'm probably gonna do a lacquer finish on the front of the headstock and I may bury a logo in there. We'll see if I do that or not. Um, but I'm going to do a tongue oil finish on the back of the neck and uh, the back of the headstock, the heel, um, basically everywhere that else that's exposed. And uh, that uh, will leave just really the fretboard exposed and I'll oil it uh, with lemon oil like, like I do with everything else, rosewood. But uh, this thing's pretty much ready to go and it fits the body really well, so I'm excited. Um, next I'll do a tongue oil finish and uh, I'll show you that process. Alright, well the finish I'm going to use on this neck is a tongue oil finish. This is Formby's, which I've had this can for probably 20 years. I think this company has been purchased by Minwax. Um, I don't know what the formulation is with the new Minwax, um, but uh, I think pretty much the instructions are the same for most tongue oils. Essentially the process is apply the tongue oil to a rag. It's a wiping finish so you wipe it on the neck uh, or any any wood surface and then you let it dry for 12 hours and then you go back and scuff it back up with steel wool and then do it again until you're happy with the shine and then basically you polish it with steel wool at the end. So it's a, it's a pretty simple finish. It's hard to mess it up because you can always just scuff it right back off. Um, but uh, I'll show you the, the basics here. I just have a little patch of a rag. They say to use a lint-free rag. I find that to be good advice, but not super critical because even if you get some lint in the finish, you can always get it out with a steel wool. The interesting thing about this is that it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it. That's just the natural tint. and. Um, you don't really notice it at first. Once you start building up some layers, it'll sort of get this honey color to it. And uh, I don't think I'm going to go full honey on this. I just want to get it a little darker than the super white brand new wood that it is. But uh, it, it turns out really cool in the end. And uh, it looks a little bit vintage just because of the tint. And what I, what I tend to do is leave the neck for last because I'll hold the neck by the heel to do most of my work. I've sometimes hung things by a string through the tuner hole. Uh, you can do that, but this works pretty well for me. And so one of the things I want to mention is that I do 
a lot of my prep work um, by wiping the neck down with uh, uh, denatured alcohol. And uh, that just gets rid of a lot of the sawdust and you know, saw, you know, dust particles of old finish and things. And I also blow out the, my neck with, uh, or blow out the holes with uh, an air compressor. You could achieve the same thing, I'm sure, by using canned air, um, or just blowing, blowing with your, uh, with your old mouth hole. So you can sort of see now the wet look that this is starting to get here versus the unfinished headstock. Um, you know, it, it's going to end up kind of looking that way when it's done drying. And it's darker than the original. And the nice thing about this is it's just enough finish to provide protection for the wood, but it's not enough finish to really affect the feel of the wood on the neck when you're playing. Um, it really feels like a natural wood neck, which is obviously good for people who play a lot. Uh, you don't want a lot of finish on your neck, especially if you're up on stage and your hands are sweating and that kind of thing. So this is a really good finish to use for any guitar application of a surface that you're going to be touching. Also, because of the way things are, you don't have to worry too much about missing a spot. Because if you miss a spot, you can always touch it up. And it's uh, almost invisible to repair this type of a finish. So I'm not going to finish, like I said, the fretboard, so I'll just leave this sitting on the fretboard overnight. That's one of the reasons why I leave this heel to last, because it's real simple to finish the heel with it just lay laying on the fretboard like that. And I don't need to hold it very much to finish this part. And if I make a mistake on this part, it's completely hidden by the installation on the body. So. All right. Well, that's more or less done. Um, Next step is to wait 12 hours and then do a steel wool polish and then I'll just keep doing more and more coats. But that's pretty much the basics.